Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Ecamm. This is the new Ecamm 360. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at a PTZ IP camera from the people over at Newey. Now, they've actually reached out to me and said, Mike, would you like to uh, try one of our IP cameras? As regular viewers will know, I've reviewed quite a few in the past. Everything from the uh, Xiaomi Defang to the um, Eight Man cameras and all the others in between. There's been quite a few that we've taken a look at, but this one is actually a little bit different. I like the look of it. I like the company and hopefully it's going to be a very good ecosystem replacement for what was the, uh, the Xiaomi family. So let's take a look at some of the specs first of all before we dive too deep into this. So first of all, the model number is the IPC100. Uh, the power voltage is five volts, one amp. So this means you can power it from a very modest USB type connector if you wanted to. It does work on the micro USB connector type. So if again, you've gone from the Xiaomi camera family, which used the micro USB connection, you can quite happily just unplug this and plug these straight into where your existing setup is. So for those of you looking for a minimal installation or easy installation, this is gonna be perfect, especially now that Xiaomi are shutting down most of the servers outside of China. Anyway, moving on. So compatibility wise, uh, as long as you're on Android 4.4 or above, absolutely fine. And with the Apple ecosystem, you're looking at iOS 8 or newer. So some of the features of this, now this is a 1080p full HD camera. It's got a pan and tilt control. You've also got a zoom feature built in within the app also. You've got motion detection, which is where the 360 degrees comes into it. So this will follow you around. It's actually 355 degrees. So the motor spins right away around apart from one tiny little segment. But because you've got that wide view angle lens, which is 120 degrees view, that makes up for the extra five degrees that you're missing. So complete surround vision, no problems whatsoever. Uh, you've also got two-way audio, so you can communicate with people. So say for instance, you've got it in a playroom for the children, or maybe you're looking after an elderly relative, you can have a two-way conversation, you can check in with them, ask them if they're okay, make sure everything's all good. You can have that two-way conversation. And there is actually quite a loud loudspeaker on the side, and I'll be showing you some demonstration footage of that in action a little bit later. Uh, moving on to storage, and now storage is taken care of, you can have a few options actually with this storage wise. Again, very similar to some of the other IP cameras. So with this camera, you've got the option so you can record footage or pictures directly to your mobile device through the application itself. Or alternatively, you can use a micro SD card, which is installed actually just beneath the lens here, hidden away. So you can put that in there and you can have that to set so you can either have your motion activated recordings, or you can, again, you can take snapshots, or you can set it to a continual loop recording, which is what I've been setting it to, well, I've been testing this device, and actually after about half a day's of use, it's used about three gigabytes of storage, so if that gives you some idea, so 12 hours for three gigabytes of storage, so depending how long you want your camera to actually do a loop record, obviously that is gonna mean how big an SD card you're gonna need, or micro SD card. So bear that into consideration. Um, you've also got the option, if you wanted to, you can take out a subscription to Amazon Web Services for, I think it's about $5 a month, so about $3.50 in the UK, and you can have all your recordings 24-7 backed up onto Amazon's cloud, which you can access again through the application. Another feature here is night vision. I think that's pretty much a given for most IP cameras, but actually the night vision it's not just regular night vision, they've actually enhanced it a little bit with some gamma correction. So some of the previous cameras I've tested, they didn't have a great deal of contrast and the whites seem to be massively overblown. But with this, you've got gamma correction, so it looks a little bit more natural, or at least as natural as it can do in black and white. So that's a brief introduction to some of the specifications. Let's take a look at what we get actually in the box. Now the first thing obviously is the camera itself, which I think actually looks pretty cute. And if you can compare it with the Xiaomi Defang, similar kind of size width wise, a little bit wider, certainly a little bit shorter, but I would say definitely a, a whole lot cuter. So if you're gonna be having this in your home and you'd want it to kind of match in with your surroundings, I think the, uh, the new eCam is actually gonna look a lot nicer in your surroundings. This looks a little bit kind of blocky. Um, I think that actually looks a little bit like one of those automated air fresheners you can get. So 
to most people, they actually see that, they won't recognize it. it is actually a security camera. So it is relatively discreet. Now talking of security cameras, there is actually another camera that this company does, which is a, uh, a static camera, just a, a wide angle lens on it, which you can get also. And part of their growing ecosystem, there's also gonna be a upcoming external camera as well. So if you're maybe looking at this system and thinking, well, that's a great camera, but I wanna expand, you can expand it. There are gonna be other cameras coming out so you can have all of your cameras in one nice tidy ecosystem and keep things really nice and organized. So going back to what we get in the box, so we get our instruction manual, which is actually exceptionally easy to follow. It tells you what's in the box, uh, where all the components are, where the microphone is, status light. Uh, the microphone itself is actually just beneath the lens there, so that's in a pretty decent place. You've got the speaker on the side, as I said previously. You've also got at the bottom the SD card, which tucks in just underneath there. And on the front, you've got the status LED light, which currently at the moment is showing up white. Generally, when you're setting up for the first time, that will come on initially solid red whilst it's booting up. Then it'll go to flashing red to say that it's ready to receive commands or to be set up. And after that, once it's connecting to the Wi-Fi, it will flash white and then it will stay solid white whilst it's on. Now you have got an option actually in the uh, application. So you can turn that light off if it's distracting or for whatever reason, if you wanna be a little bit more discreet, you can turn that light off altogether. Now another thing you've probably noticed already is they've actually kindly put the uh, mics unboxing on there as a, uh, as a nice gesture. I never asked them to do that, that it came through the post like that. So uh, thanks to you guys for doing that. That is uh, really made my day actually when I unboxed it, I was quite surprised. Uh, moving around to the back now this is where you've got all the kind of the connectivity which is very minimal so all you've got is the micro usb connector now you can see at the moment there's just a, a regular black usb cable on there i've done that purely to demonstrate that even though they do supply actually a, an extremely elegant micro usb connector with a kind of tapered bung so that goes in the back and will be in, held in there really nicely also they've color coded the cable to match the base as well, which I think is a, it's actually a really nice touch. Um, I may well use that, but where I'm gonna be replacing my Xiaomi camera from the living room, there's already a cable there, which is kind of hardwired into the wall. So there's no need for me to use that cable, but I thought I'd show you it anyway. Uh, next to the power cable on the back, there's a small hole, which is the factory reset button. So nice and simple. So should you choose to either change some settings or maybe something's gone wrong with your initial setup, you can quite easily press and hold the button on the back with one of those kind of little SIM release tools and wait for the bleep and then it will start going through its rebooting process, which is really nice and super simple to access. Talking more about some of the things we get in the box, uh, there's mounting hardware. So this is so you can actually mount the device to a wall or to a ceiling. So you can actually mount this device upside down. This clip just goes on the base and locks into place. So two screws coming out, which are included. There's actually four screws and four wall plugs in there. So you can mount it in two different places if you wanted to, I guess. Um, again, really easy to do in the application. There is an option to reverse the footage. So if you are having it upside down, then you can do it quite easily. Now to remove that, just lift the, the tabs at the back and then slide it forward and it comes off and it is actually a little bit difficult to get off, which is actually probably a good thing so it doesn't accidentally get knocked off the wall or the ceiling and cause any damage. So there's the camera itself. It's probably a good idea now to jump into the app, but actually before I do that, there is an option with this device. Now you get this card, which actually says, uh, dearest new user, thank you for your purchase. You can become a VIP customer. So you get more privileges, so you get an additional uh, extended warranty uh, and free returns up to 60 days and you get the option. Now this is actually how I came across it. You actually get a free option to test new products. So all you do is uh, register your email at support at newy.com. Now you don't need to make a purchase to do this. You can actually just register on their site. They are currently offering to send these devices out to testers for review purposes, because they're trying to get a real idea of how well this is received, how well it works, if there's any problems, anything they need to do to iron out before they go for a massive full scale release. So if you're looking to get one of these, it's certainly worth doing. I will put some links in the description below so you can click on them and you can get in contact with them and maybe they'll send you one free of charge for you to test in the same way that I am and hopefully to get some feedback. So 
definitely worth trying a free camera well anything free is generally good in my books but also if you do purchase one you've also got the option so you get a free gift which in this case is a 32 gigabyte micro sd card again all the details for that will be in the description below so you can check it out for yourself so let's look at the actual app for the camera okay so we're going to go into the app now so hopefully this is recording so you'll be able to see exactly what's going on and as you open up the app this app actually is super simple to install all you do is go to google play type in newy or newy cam and it appears straight away so once you've installed your camera which again is actually very easy although i will mention I did have problems with my uh, Nokia 8. For some reason, it didn't like the fact that there was like a dual band modem in here or whatever it was. I went over to my older P10 Lite, installed straight away. I used Kath's iPhone 7, it installed straight away. So there's some strange quirk with my Nokia 8, which it didn't like. So I will mention that uh, just in case anyone else has a Nokia 8 and maybe they might struggle, but if you've got access to another phone, it's no problem at all. You can install the device on another device and it's absolutely fine. Once you put the app on your phone, it then will propagate or populate the camera into your, uh, into your account. So this is the home screen that you'll see first of all. And as you can see, it's got like a snapshot of something which has happened on the camera to give you an idea of where it actually is. And obviously if you add more cameras, you just click on the add camera and you can choose the new cam indoor you can choose the new cam indoor 1080p or you can choose the new cam 360 and also soon coming up there'll be the external version as well so you can add a camera that's pretty straightforward literally you put in a couple of details about your wi-fi show the device a qr code it scans it reboots and that is essentially it you do have to create a account with uh, newy first of all to get the app up and running but again super simple I would show you it, but literally it's just me putting my username and password in, which I don't really want to do on camera, but again, it is very, very simple. So this is the main menu. So uh, you can either click on the camera itself. So if you click on the camera, it goes into the studio camera, which is what I've named this one. And now you can see a live feed of what's going on. So if I wave in front, you can see there's pretty much no lag there whatsoever. Now what I will do actually, I'll put the, um, the motion tracking on for the camera. So hopefully now, It'll pick me up and now it's going to start recording me. So let's go back to our main menu. So from the main menu, you've got your account settings. So you've got your account, your usernames, passwords, all that kind of stuff, profile picture. You can make any changes there. You've got an inbox. So if there's any system messages or any messages from the individual cameras, so say for instance, the camera has detected some movement on the studio camera, you can go in here and it will show you all the motion detections or sound detections, which is another option and all you do is click on those and it will play a, a small sample of what actually has happened at the time it was triggered. So really nice. So going back to system messages at the moment, there's one and this is the device sharing. So you can actually share the device with other users. So say for instance, uh, your parents and you want to keep an eye on your child while you've got maybe uh, some daycare in or whatever it may be, you can have the app set up on multiple devices with different usernames and passwords and you can share the device amongst them. So that's pretty good. Again, if you wanna do that sort of thing, or maybe you're a business owner. For businesses, this would be great. So you can leave this set up in your, your shop or whatever it may be, your premises, your workshop, warehouse, whatever it is, and it will follow the motion around. So if there's uh, an empty garage at night, for instance, then you can set it so that it will be triggered by sound or movement and you'll get a notification. If you've got the camera shared with other employees or other managers or whatever it may be, then they will get the notification as well. So then you can work out which one of you is gonna go and attend the site. But realistically, you shouldn't have to. So you can click on the camera and actually see what's going on. It could be a false alarm. It could be a genuine intrusion, but at least from this, rather than having your alarm company saying there's an alarm activation and you don't really know what it is with this, you can actually see what is going on before you get out of bed and get dressed and make that journey to your workplace or your business, whatever it may be. So certainly worth looking at for that respect. Uh, going back to so your app settings, so terms of service, policy, uh, you can clear the cache. So if, if for any reason you're experiencing problems, generally clearing cache is what sorts that out. Um, I haven't had any problems, so I haven't had to use it. Uh, but also, you could maybe do that every now and then just to prevent any possible problems. But again, I haven't had this long enough to see if there is going to be any problems. I don't think there will be. I'm not entirely sure why they've actually added that in, but it's nice to have that 
good easy access to it without having to route through loads of system menus. And also you've got help at the bottoms in your main menu. So again, you've got your built-in user manual, frequently asked questions, and if you're getting stuck beyond all help, you can click on send us a message and it will open up and you can send a message to them via email. So that's the, uh, the main system menu. If now you go into the camera itself, you've also got sub menus for that. So I'll go quickly over what we've got actually on the screen at the moment. So the, uh, you've got the video camera button, so click on video and it will record video and it will save it to your device, not to the SD card, it's a separate entity. Uh, if you click on the camera, then it will take a snapshot. If you click on the microphone, then that will open up the microphone for two-way conversation. And if you click on the speaker icon, then you will be able to hear what is currently being done or whatever noise is in front of your camera at the moment. Now, for obvious reasons, because I'm in very close proximity, I'm not gonna turn those on because I'll get horrendous feedback and that's the last thing that any of us want. So as you can see, the footage is actually pretty good, pretty sharp. At the moment, we've got some weird lighting going on in here because we've got obviously the studio lights, there's light sources everywhere, but it doesn't seem to be too phased by it and actually looks relatively good, actually uh, surprisingly good. It's held up very well. Uh, so moving down at the bottom, you've got the the timeline so if you click on today now this is for those of you that have got S micro SD cards installed so you can go along and you can see what has been done see what's been going on through the day that sort of thing everything's there and you can just scroll through and see what is uh, see what's happening it's actually very responsive <laughs> get rid of that so that is the main settings on there so that will show all your previous recordings that you can access if you go to the top and click on the uh, the settings, so this is where you've got your main features. So audio recording, you can turn on or off. So if, for instance, you're in a environment where there's confidential information or something along those lines, you can just turn off audio, just click on the toggle and that will turn it off. Status light, as I said before, so if you click on that, it turns off the little light which is on the front, which hopefully you've just seen. And there we go, it's come back on again. Uh, rotate image again for turning it upside down if you've got the camera mounted on a ceiling or a wall you can reverse or rotate the image uh, motion tracking you can turn on or off so if uh, motion tracking isn't something you want to take use of um, i can't imagine why you would turn that off on this camera because that is its kind of primary selling point the fact that it has got the pan and tilt uh, if you don't want motion tracking then i'd probably suggest you go for the other model which is the more static camera so I'll turn that back on uh, video quality, we've got normal or high. I've left it in high. I've also used it in normal, and I've got to be honest with you, I couldn't tell the difference, so uh, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. Maybe Nui, if they watch this video, maybe they can post in the comment section below what the actual difference is. I honestly couldn't tell the difference. Now we can go into motion detection, which is a little bit lower down. So this is your sensitivity. So this is for your notifications. So in the moment with it set to close, that means that it will still register that there's movement and it will still record and it will still track things but it won't actually send a notification to any of the connected accounts so if you set it to low medium or high then you will get those notifications now again if this is going to be in like a high traffic area or you've got maybe cats or animals in the house so you don't want it being triggered all the time just because the dog's gone into the next room or something at night then you can adjust the sensitivity accordingly and the same actually goes with the sound detection. So sound detection is exactly the same thing. So this is probably best for those of you with uh, babies, toddlers or whatever. So if this is in the child's room, you can set it to low, medium or high. So if the baby is disturbed, you don't want to be disturbed if it's just the baby is rolling over at night or just banged something against the side of the cot. So you can change your settings accordingly to work out what's best for you. A little bit of trial and error there will get the best settings possible. At the moment, I've got it set to close because, again, we've got cats in the house and they kind of walk around at night and they bump into things or knock things over or jump into boxes. So I don't really want that kind of thing going on. But if we went away on a holiday, for example, then you could set it to low or maybe medium just so that you do get that beneficial warning if there's something going on at home. Uh, also, it will pick up things like fire alarms or smoke alarms. So if they're activated, then again, that will pick up and you will get the notification to your phone. Uh, going back, so storage wise, now storage is, again, as we explained earlier, you've got the option to subscribe to the cloud service. It also tells you your SD card free and total space. And you've got the option to turn loop recording on or off. As I said previously, I've got it set to loop recording. You've also got the option to show if you want to erase the card, maybe it's picked up something that it shouldn't have, and you can format the SD card. 
camera sharing is the next one. So you can go into camera sharing and you can send an invitation to other registered users. Or maybe if you want to, you can actually set up an account for somebody else using their email address or whatever, and then you could send them a invitation. They can then add the application to their phone or, or mobile device and all well and good. As you can see at the moment, users I've got myself and Kath is set on there. And if for some reason, say for instance, this is in a workplace and you want to remove somebody, say an employee's left to go to work somewhere else or something, you can just simply click on remove and then you take away access from them to the system, even though they still possibly have the app installed on their device. So very flexible in that respect. Uh, going down, you've got camera information, so it gives you your IP address, device IDs, firmwares, all that kind of stuff, which uh, possibly could be useful. Also gives you the name of the device, which you can change if you wish to. And at the bottom there, you've got the option to remove the camera. So if there's a camera which is no longer working or whatever, you can just remove the camera and it comes off of the list. Or alternatively, at the very bottom, you've got the reset to factory settings. So if you're in a remote area or you can't get access to the camera, maybe it's stuck in the ceiling position and you want to reset it, you can just click on that rather than sticking the pin into the back of the device. So that is uh, that is pretty much it. Now hopefully you've seen some of the live video which has been going past and that I've recorded previously. I will be adding some more video into this uh, presentation every now and then. But let me know, what do you think of it? I'm actually really impressed. The price of this at the moment on Amazon, I believe is $39.99, which I think is actually a very reasonable price considering all the features you get and also the growing ecosystem that will be coming. The exterior camera, I'm certainly looking forward to. I think that's gonna be a fantastic addition uh, and with something which the, uh, the Xiaomi camera sadly missed out on. So it was kind of like you had to have this mix of different ecosystems. So it's gonna be really nice going forward to have an ecosystem where I can just go into one app and all my cameras are covered completely. That'd be fantastic. But again, that isn't with us yet. They will be coming out soon with that, hopefully sooner rather than later. So again, let me know what you think of this product in the description below. Don't forget to check out the links as well. So if you want to maybe hopefully get one of these for free, then you can uh, get in contact with Nui and maybe you can review one yourself and get a free camera into the bargain. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how-to. This has been the pretty darn cool Nui 360 cam. And hopefully we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.